In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to compute overhead variances using an example, which you can download from theaccountingdoctor.com. Twinkle Toes Inc. produces dance shoes for stores all over the world. While the pairs of shoes are boxed individually, they are crated and shipped in batches. The shipping department records both variable and overhead cost. The following information pertains to shipping cost. So here we're given our information, our static budget amounts, and our actual results. Now, this problem differs from many of the other example problems in uh, standard costing because it is on a batch level. Because we have to keep that in our, in our mind when we're looking at our charts and computing these variances. So the first thing we want to do is draw our variance analysis diagrams that we use to compute our variances. So I will draw the first one. And I'm going to label each peg as always. So we have actual quantity times actual price. Actual quantity times standard price. And standard quantity times standard price. And this first chart will be my variable. And the two variances that we will compute when looking at variable overhead will be our spending variance and our efficiency variance. So the first thing we need to find is our actual quantity. As I said before, this problem is slightly different because it's on a batch level. So when we're looking at quantity, we need to think in batches. So in this case, actual quantity is speaking about packing hours. And packing hours are based on crates. So the first step is to compute the number of crates. Well, they tell us that we have the pairs of shoes shipped is 180,000. And that the number of pairs of shoes per crate is 10. So 180 divided by 10 gives me 180,000 or 18,000 crates. And we need that in hours. So if we multiply the number of packing hours it takes per crate, 1.1 hours per crate, that will give us our actual quantity. So 18,000 crates times 1.1 hours per crate. And then we need to multiply that times our actual price which they tell me is $21. That will give me my actual cost of $415,800. To find the middle peg, we've already found actual quantity to be the 180,000 divided by 10 to get us the number of crates times 1.1 hours per crate. That gave us my, our actual quantity. And for the middle peg, we need to multiply that times our standard price and they tell us that our standard price is the $20 per hour because now we've got our actual quantity in hours. So we'll multiply the actual quantity times the standard price on the middle peg of $20. And that'll give me a middle peg number of $396,000. On the last peg, we have standard quantity times standard price. So standard quantity is really asking, asking us here what is the number of hours that we should have taken per crate? So to find standard quantity, we're going to take the, the pairs of shoes that were actually shipped divided by the number of pairs of shoes that should have been in each crate of 12 to get our, our quantity of crates and then multiply that times the number of hours that we should have used packing hours per crate we should have used. And then we'll multiply that times our standard price of $20 to give us a flexible budget amount or standard cost amount of $360,000. Now we can begin to compute our variances. So we'll start with the spending variance. Again, I'd like for you to just pay attention to the equation part. Ignore the numbers for right now. So the only difference in this equation and this equation is price. Actual price, standard price. So if we think about 
Well, we actually paid $21 per hour, and we should have spent $20 per hour. So we spent more than we should have. That's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. So this is going to be an unfavorable variance. So we can go ahead and find that out. And now we just need to get the difference in the actual cost and the middle peg. And the difference in these two numbers is 19800 So that will be our spending variance. And we'll do the same thing with efficiency. The difference in the two numbers here is $36,000. And now let's focus on just the difference in the two equations. The only difference here is quantity. So our actual quantity of hours was more than we should have used. So that again is a bad thing. So that's unfavorable efficiency variance for variable overhead. So here's our fixed overhead diagram, and we're just going to fill in the information pretty quickly in, in this one as far as the first two pegs go. So they tell us in the problem that actual fixed cost are 55000 and our budgeted fixed cost are 60000 So the only peg that we really have to compute is the third peg of fixed overhead in this case. And the first thing we need to compute is standard quantity. So one thing you should keep in mind, that overhead has a cost driver. Whatever that cost driver is, it's, it follows through with f uh, variable and fixed. It's not going to change. So your standard quantity that was for variable will be the standard quantity for fixed. However, in this case, we're not given a standard price or budgeted price for fixed overhead based on a per hour rate. So we're going to have to compute that standard price, which is our fixed cost divided by the budgeted packing hours. So to find the standard price, we're going to take $60,000, which is the fixed overhead cost budgeted amount, and divide that by this, the budgeted amount of pairs of shoes shipped divided by the average number of pairs of shoes per crate to get the number of crates, multiply that times 1.2 hours, which is the number of packing hours per crate. That's going to give us the number of total hours and divide that into our fixed cost and that will give us our standard price per hour for fixed overhead, which comes out to be 2.5 or $2.50. Now we can compute our variances for fixed overhead. Our spending variance is the difference in actual and budgeted which is $5,000. And actual fixed cost were less than budgeted. That's a good thing. So that will be a favorable variance. The difference in budgeted, budgeted and allocated fixed overhead is our production volume variance. And in this case, it's $15,000. And now we have to determine if it's favorable or unfavorable. Just as with variable overhead, the best way to compare the second and third pegs for fixed overhead is with the equations. And the only difference in the two equations is quantity. And we know that for the allocated amount, the quantity is the 180,000 divided by 12 times 1.2, which gives us 18,000 hours. And for the middle peg, we know that the budget amount is 60000 And we just found the standard price on peg 3 to be 2.5. So if we take the 60000 and divide that by 2.5, we see that our actual quantity was 24000 So we can see that we took more hours than we should have. So we actually took 24000 hours and we should have only took 18,000 hours. So that makes this um, an unfavorable production volume variance. Also, the only difference in standard quantity and actual quantity is the production level. And in this case, we're talking about shoe shipped being the production level. And when you look at this, we shipped 180,000 pairs of shoes. We planned to ship 
240,000 pairs of shoes. Therefore, it's unfavorable because our production was less than anticipated. Mm -hmm.